So we've been talking about uh, production throughout this unit and uh, so we're going to get into the nuts and bolts of it and this is, uh, you know, we're going to take some really simple examples so uh, you can make them more complicated but uh, there's not any necessity to do that. Uh, but this is what economists are hired to do in order to find out relationships and we call that a production function and that's just a fancy term for actually graphing out what the relationship in the short run and we discussed that in the last unit what that was to from the inputs and the level of input to the level of output so we want to be able to graph that thing out and be able to predict where we fit within this this production function so it's just a mathematical relationship is what we're going to boil it down to and it's a physical quantity of the output that can be obtained from various levels of variable inputs so think about the example that we gave before if you put more fertilizer on what's the effect on output we could graph that against each other the input versus the output and we would come up with we could just connect the dots basically if we put that on an xy graph so uh, and and we would just study that in a linear fashion that's just a two-dimensional graph that puts inputs against outputs so and and that is what we consider a production function so we're just gonna be able to isolate the that change in the output as a result of the input. Also, I try to include this not to uh, confuse you, but if you're if you're talking to other people in the economics world, they call this the input-output model. That's the same thing. If somebody referred to that, we're actually talking about a production function. Just seeing how the correlation between inputs is to the output because we can actually effectively change the level of inputs in order to effectively change the output so if we have some data available to us and this one is uh, taking a look at the production function as it relates to production of corn as a farmer we can take and the amount of nitrogen that you put on corn definitely has an effect on the output of that particular corn. You might see some kind of correlation that's happening within this data set right here. And we could have you graph that out. Okay, and that's where I want, I want to just pause this video for a minute if you if you would just hit the pause button and actually just graph this out real simple graph take take the these data points put your nitrogen on the y-axis put your corn the output on your x-axis and just see what kind of relationship we have we know that with no fertilizer added to the resource base or the bundle we will actually get a, a, a harvest rate of 10 bushels per acre, okay? And as we up the nitrogen, you can see that it actually increases the, uh, the level of output. Now, just looking at the data set, and you've got a graph in front of you now, if you perform that little, uh, put the video on pause, and I'm just, I'm just figuring that I can, uh, I can rely on all of you to do that. You can, you can see, just looking at the, at this data. Now, data sets typically are, can be thousands of data points. So we're just giving you a real simple one to perform at this point. So the units of the variable input are there per unit of all fixed inputs okay we're just we're keeping the fixed input centers paribus constant throughout this whole uh, example and then we're going to look at the amount of corn output throughout this whole production function 
So, and this is the question that as a manager, of the firm that you're going to ask yourself throughout, throughout this whole thing. These are, these are questions that we ask ourselves all the time is how much nitrogen do I need? Then you might, the, the dealer who's trying to sell you nitrogen, this would be a question. What would be my output if I put on so much nitrogen? And then I have to put that in a dollar figure and then I can figure out what, whether that's an efficient use of my resources. Okay. So that's, that's the whole, that's what we're trying to get at in this whole process. We're just at the very beginning of it. So from this data set, we can see some things that are happening. And if you've got, got it all graphed out, I'm going to graph it out here in, in portions. So I've got a, a, a box over right here. And you can see that the nitrogen that I apply is in... 10 pound increments per acre. So I'm going to increase from 0 to 10, 10 to 20, and 20 to 30. And this is the result of the output. Holding all other variables constant is that I'm going to see a production of 10, and then it jumps to 17, and then it jumps to 30, and then it jumps to 60. And this is a typical production response in the initial portion of a production function that we see, is that the initial output increases at an increasing rate. So we can see jumping from 10, we get a 7 bushel increase. And we go from 7 to 30, we get a 13 bushel increase. And going from 20 to 30, we get a 30 bushel increase. So you ought to be able to, just looking at the data set, you can see that your efficiencies per pound of fertilizer increases during this initial portion of the input as we apply it and we increase it. And we can see this in your graph that you graphed out there. Whoops. <laughs> we get a line. We put the output here and the input over here, we will get a line that is actually increasing at an increasing rate. And that's very, very typical in your production functions when you look at it linearly like this. Okay, so let's look at the next set of data and we'll include the level of 30 pounds of fertilizer in there just to get a, get a relationship change. And you can see something going on there too. We went from, we're still increasing by 10 pounds at each level of input, but we went from a change of 30 to 60, which is 30, from 60 to 85, which is 25, 85 to 98, which is 13, 98 to 106, which is eight, and then we go from 106 to 110, which is just four. So it looks like to me, if I just look at the data set itself, is that like there's something going on. There's still, it's the, per, the total output is increasing, but it's increasing at a decreasing rate, which is interesting. Okay. And if we were to graph this portion and include it in our production function, we would see this kind of correlation between the level of out input to our level of output, where we are accelerating at the very beginning as we're adding that input, and then somewhere, I'm just seeing, just guessing, somewhere around here, we actually are, it's, it's leveling out and actually it gets to where, if we were to graph it all the way out, we get to a point where we actually do not get any more output for by that incremental increase of input. Okay? And you see that in your data set. This is a real, like I said, this is a real simple data set. A lot of our data sets that we actually deal with are actually very, very sophisticated and huge. So we may not be able to see these things so well if 
for not trained from the simple point of view. If you look at it from here, if, when we go from 70 pounds of fertilizer to 80, 70 is actually within this production function is what we call our technical maximum for that production function. But the next level is actually going to decrease. And I'm getting ahead of myself just a hair, but hopefully it's fairly obvious that this would not be in the picture of where we want to be. This can't be where we want to be as far as our production function and where our business is at is because we're going to spend more on fertilizer in order to get less output. Are you crazy? Anyway, we'll get we'll get into that a little bit more. So we eventually we reach that technical maximum with our production function. Okay, and that that doesn't necessarily mean that that is the best place. And again, where we're trying to search for is the actual where it, our questioning should follow along these lines. It's like, where am I actually maximizing my profit along this production function? We just don't have quite enough information. We're getting there. And this is one of the building blocks we're going to use in order to answer that question. But... Um, it's essential, in fact, but it doesn't actually ask, answer where, what exact point or level of fertilizer should we use in order to maximize profits. We can maximize output, but that may not be a maximizing profits. Somewhere, somewhere along this line is going to be a point where we will actually maximize profits, and that's a really essential question to ask when you're in business. And this just points out where actually the production output becomes negative. And I always refer to this, and I think maybe I might even, everybody's got a, got a crazy cousin Eddie. And it might be, you know, Aunt Vidalia or whoever that happens to be and uh, if you don't know any crazy people then it's you no I'm just kidding um, anyway this this is where your crazy cousin Eddie would be on the production function it's a point of irrational use of those inputs where you get less output that can't be where you're going to be and you're going to survive with any length longevity with any legs, however you want to describe it, okay? So, crazy cousin Eddie territory right here. We identified that. So, that's that's great information for business people. It's like, I don't want to be over there. That's not fun. I'm not, uh, I'm making less from putting more in, and so, therefore, it's less profits and less for our business to, uh, to continue on into the future. So, bad territory to be in. Okay, I'm gonna pause it right there because this video is getting plenty long. This is the fourth video in a series, production uh, of production. So, um, I wish you adieu and uh, wish you well and we'll pause it right there.